this week I'm digging into my archives of footage again between lockdown two and three to show you how me and my dad fitted a loft ladder to the bungalow's new roof area to create some extra storage. Now, I think my parents bought this young man Timberline loft access kit from Wix for around £110. And you can find many others, but if you want this one in particular, I'll leave a link to it below. Also, a disclaimer, the manufacturer's instructions may be completely different to this. I just followed my dad's directions because he's done this before. Anyway, the first thing we did was utilise some of the packaging that came with it as a template and placed it evenly where we wanted it in the porch. We also had to unclip the strip lighting from the ceiling because it was in the way and we'll screw it further along once we've finished. My dad also wanted to cut the opening slightly wider and extended the width with a straight edge so it wouldn't be too tight and we can fit the frame later with packers. And I drew around that with a marker pen, good old sweeping brush helps again, and drilled a hole to slot my jigsaw blade in and cut the plastic fascia. Obviously you have to be careful with what's above here like pipes, cables and stuff. But because my dad built this roof himself, which I shared in a video over a year ago, he knew exactly what was above it. And there's also another loft hatch in the bungalow itself. So we were able to access this area above, but creating this one makes it much easier to access storage. When I hit some wood though, I let my dad step in with a handsaw because not knowing what was above there myself, I was just worried that I'd cut the wrong thing and then I'd continue with a jigsaw again. Yes, sometimes I'm a chicken. So once the fascia was out of the way and I could see exactly what I was dealing with for myself, I found the reciprocating saw on my works jigsaw really useful to cut the beams from this angle and I'd cut that as much as I could. Now above this is also the original flat garage roof and above that is the new roof and we need to know exactly where to cut it from above. My dad asked me to drill a hole in each corner. and I poked through some long strips of scrap plastic in each one so it could be used as a reference from above. At this point I stay downstairs to keep an eye out while my dad matched the four holes to create a square and cut with a longer slimmer blade on the reciprocating saw. Or it might have been the jigsaw function, I can't remember. Then removed it. You've got some Ubering to do. And now it's time to build a frame for the loft hatch. I rested the longest side on a structural piece of timber to mark its length and cut with a handsaw. However, if I did this again, I'd probably use a mitre saw instead, which I'll talk about in a minute. But half the time with DIY projects, setting up the tools and getting your safety gear ready can put me off power tools in general. And I copied that to make another matching piece. So I've got two sides then. But for the other two shorter sides to go width ways, I needed the length of the two thicknesses put together, including the width of the box. So that's why I've got them stacked up on top of each other to measure them and get the final length. Now all my cuts are done, I positioned them around the loft hatch and pre-drilled and screwed them together with four inch screws. And this is where I learned I need to work on getting the hand sawing technique straighter. And the telltale sign was when I got to the final screw, the last bit of wood wouldn't sit flat on the floor. It was lifting up. To remedy it, I slackened off the screws on the opposite corner and it instantly dropped down. Then my dad stood on it while I put the screws back and nipped in the other screws. Phew, sorted. That was embarrassing. Once we'd created the frame, we then removed the loft bit from the inside and we wanted the frame to stay square. So my dad's quickly cutting some plywood corner gussets for me, which I'd then temporarily screw in each opposite corner, but these will be removed once we'd screwed them to the rest of the roof's framework. Okay, so the frame with the gussets on has now been slotted through the hole to test fit. This is where my dad realized he needed to remove a little bit of the protruding wood and then make the frame even, which we eyeballed 
also knowing that the trim would cover the cut fascia later. It's also currently resting on the fascia itself, which was sagging ever so slightly, so we prop that up as well with a long length and another offcut. And while my dad's still above, he's wedging in packers between the beams and the frame that I built, and he's directing me where to screw through because I couldn't see where the packers were from this angle. And also doing this at the same time as making sure I didn't knock the propped up wood. Once that was done, the gussets were no longer needed. I could then take the Youngman loft up to the slot with the hinge part facing upwards and towards the back. I really do apologise about the terrible lighting. And we tried to make the loft insert level with the fascia, but we also found the fascia needed to be trimmed slightly in one of the corners, just a touch. Then I worked on getting the middle of one of the sides flush with the fascia, screwed that to the frame, then I could work on getting the other sides flush as well. It's tricky work when you've got to keep moving the ladders, but because the loft insert is much slimmer than the framework that I built, I didn't want to go too fierce with it and go straight through the insert, so I didn't use an impact driver. Then I had to screw the loft hatch cover to the frame with the screws provided on the hinges. For the ladders, these came much longer than we needed and they fold up. My dad is creatively reaching up to hook the ladders in while I'm now on coffee making duty. I then screwed some metal strips on the frame either side. Note there was a washer there as well, which allows the ladders to spin around. Now the ladders needed to be folded up to get out of the way. As for the latch, it slots in the manufacturer's holes and then put the screws in to fix no. without dropping it on the floor. Oh, for goodness sake. Then we needed to cut the ladders down. We lowered them but had to angle the folded up bit towards the back and then measure the gap between the floor and where the ladders folded and that was 21 inches. I then transferred the measurement to the ladders, couldn't find a square so I'm drawing a line using the back of a handsaw, unscrewed the bottom ladders to take outside and then cut. By the way if you want to see how I made the saw horses I'm using I'll leave a link below. I use them all the time. Then screwed the ladders back on again and checked to see if any more needed taking off. But it was flat to the ground and we were happy. Now we've got working loft ladders. We had an electrician to fit a light in the attic while I worked on cutting some mitered plastic trim to hide the fascia's cut edges. To stick it up there, I used some sticky foam to hold it in place, which I siliconed all around it later with white silicon off camera because it's a sticky job that I really hate. But you've seen me do it before. And believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever walked up loft ladders and walked around an attic in my life. As a kid, watching Chevy Chase's legs fall through the plasterboard ceiling in Christmas Vacation is enough to scar someone for life. And an upcoming job is to create attic storage by utilising the roof's rafters. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.